Alrighty guys, welcome back to a, another build along video. We are building the T7, the T7 trainer, which is a, um, it's kind of like a, a great value version of the F18. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's, that's my bizarre sense of humor there. Um, okay, I'm going to try and, I went with a, a kind of a zoomed out uh, view there. I hope that you guys can see this okay. Um, just going to start gluing real quick. Uh, what I usually do here is just put a nice little uh, bead of glue. Doesn't have to be crazy. The biggest thing is alignment. Uh, obviously for aesthetic reasons, you want it to look like everything lines up nicely, but for also the uh, the canopy canopy fitment, um, I typically do these videos when my son is in school or I'm in the uh, in, a, in a different room with better ventilation. To uh, that reminds me, while this is kicking, I'm going to go open up a window. I added a light right here to help kind of, uh, and plus I have the, the window over here or the door to help you guys see a little bit better. Um, okay, where is the nose cone? Here it is. So this is funny. I'm looking at this nose cone and I'm and I did not put a hash mark on this. So this is kind of like, this, these are the things that I learn as I'm going along. Um, okay, so it obviously goes this way. <laughs> so the, um, it's, it's a pretty obvious uh, nose cone. The reason why I, I sliced it here and here was so that I could print it from this side, well, this side down uh, basically, if it was flipped up this way, so that I didn't need to print uh, any support material. If I can avoid support material at any cost, I will literally do that. I will just slice pieces, have extra pieces. Um, support material, oh boy. Support material is very difficult to get off of lightweight PLA. I mean, in, in a perfect world, I would print everything in regular PLA. Uh, because it's just, it's so easy to, to take support material off and to work with it and everything's clean and there's no stringing, but, um, uh, that's not the world we live in. So for airplanes, we all need lightweight PLA, active foaming. It's much better. Um, it's about half the weight, two thirds the weight. I can get regular PLA pretty darn light. So, um, when they, when they do comparisons with regular PLA and, and lightweight PLA, they're not, they're not making it like 2% infill like I would do. So, okay. So this is coming together. Nice. Um, I was able to put this whole thing together, uh, by just gluing everything all the pieces together. Um, I try to do that. Uh, planes are obviously getting a little bit, you know, tighter, more compact, um, getting easier to, uh, well, not easier to assemble, maybe a little bit dip more difficult to assemble, but my motto is no instruction manuals. So that's the motto and, uh, and I'm sticking to it. So, oh, you know what? Before before I go ahead and I go crazy, I need to make sure that I get rid of any stuff that's going to block servo wires. You got to look in the in the servo uh, in the holes, and you got to clear out all the stringing and support. Or not, not there's not really any support, but uh, so. For this T7, you are going to need a coat hanger, or or this is actually um, this is just steel wire, like thick steel wire. It's like 1.8 or it's like two millimeter.
steel wire that um, that you uh, that you get on a spool from like the Home Depot Center or something. Okay. Okay. Just put that down. And this is the top this way. So just make sure you dry fit everything because you, sometimes you run into an issue where there's like pieces of stringing or something that's going to be in the mating surface. So we look pretty good here. So I'm just going to put, don't avoid or don't forget to make sure you're putting a bead around the whole surface. Even though there's like really thin surfaces here, like 0.8 millimeter surfaces uh, around like the intakes you really need to make sure that you put a bead there because that is gonna provide a lot of strength. Um, excuse my rush job here. Uh, I've already printed one of these. I'm printing, I have to print another one to show you guys how to build it. That's kind of my thing from now on. I wanna, I wanna always have um, build videos for you guys and show you how these things come together, so. It's, it's one thing to see them fly, and it's another thing to, to watch them be built. And if I can help anybody get into this, get a 3D printer. It's funny. I actually was, was so tentative. I, I, I didn't think I would ever be able to, let alone just print regular stuff. I always heard that printing 3D printed uh, planes was difficult because lightweight foaming, and it's so hard to get them to print. And it is. It's, there's a learning curve to it, but... Um, Think about me. I mean, I, I didn't think that I'd be doing any of this stuff, and now I'm producing planes. So um, anybody can do this. It's not hard. There's nothing. There's no magic to it. It's become so much easier, especially with like bamboo lab printers. It's like, <laughs> it's just crazy how good these things are, and how good and how far they've come. All right. Let me make sure. I know I sliced. I sliced the body in an extra piece. Uh, I don't remember. Just make sure I have all the pieces here because I have done this many times where I've had a build video going and, um, and then I, oh, here's my screw up. Okay. So I have somebody's calling me right now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys don't, aren't impeded by that. Um, okay, so I do have some, now that I'm looking down the tube, I have some stringing inside the exhaust, and you want to make sure you really uh, get as much of that out of there as you can, because it's going to affect performance. You really want to smooth it out. I don't have my sticker remover tool, and I just damaged the inside a little bit, but that's going to have to be fine. Okay, so I screwed up here um, from, for, for the ones that I send you guys, you're going to have a sliced uh, piece here so that you can print this side up and then this side down. You, I don't want any, any support material on any of these prints anymore. So it's going to have to do though. It's just going to have to, it's going to have to be fine. Um, all right, let's just verify <clears throat> real quick that we're clear. Our servo holes are clear here. When this mates here, make sure that everything's gonna be good. All right, that is good. All right, so we have clear servo holes there. All right, let's get this thing glued. All right, glue around there, glue around here, glue around everywhere. Smush it, smush it around. Okay, oops, sorry. I think I just bumped my head into the camera or my phone. All right, that looks like it's good. Look from the top. Give it a shot. Get 
this stuff to kick quick because you guys don't want to watch glue dry. So anyway, getting back to this, um, this thing flew so docile. Like that's that that was the word that I kept using over and over was just docile, docile, docile. It's not a it's not a it's not a stunt plane. It's not I wouldn't even consider it an aerobatic plane, but it is for sure a um like a jet trainer. It's uh I'm going to put the uh control horn throws like the push rod down to the bottom rung on the on the elevator. I could definitely use a little bit more elevator control. Although I mean it flared fine at the end with almost no airspeed. You, you saw my on my second landing of my video. Um totally totally great plane to fly. Um okay, so we have uh, another another person's calling me um <clears throat> here is the uh the fuselage so the fuselage is ready to go i'm gonna lay this down on its side well i'm gonna have to lay it here so you guys can see all righty so let's do i guess we'll do wings uh pretty straightforward i mean you can't really mess any of this stuff up uh, let's see here. Everything is good here. So definitely use, use lots of glue on the wings. We are kind of in uncharted territories with the, uh, uncharted waters with the, uh, with the current wing design. This is the, the thinnest, smallest wing, uh, I have made and you guys all know my philosophy on wing spars. Um, I don't want this one to bite me in the butt. So, <laughs> so definitely use enough glue, like, so you can see, oh God, I just messed that up so bad. I was about to point to uh, the glue bubbles or the glue, the, the glue beads coming out. Um, so you just line it up, make sure it's flush. Everything is flush. Flush and perpendicular. Everything has a 90 degree angle. All the all the all the surfaces. So flat, just keep it flat. You'll learn how to do this uh really quickly. My fingers were stuck together for, for a second there. Um so uh, it's hard. This light is not giving me enough light. Uh, you can't see it really. So I have like glue dripping, like not dripping, but like you can see it like beating up. That means that there's enough glue to provide a stronger surface than the actual infill itself. Like, so this is like, I built so many of these things. I can kind of just see it. I know how much to use. When in doubt, use a little bit more. If you're worried about the glue showing, just get a napkin and, and wipe it. Um, I apologize for this, uh, the lighting in here. The lighting, so this is my, this is my theater room here. I'll give you a quick tour. So there, um, you know, I have a, a projector and because I have a projector, that's a 120 inch screen. Um, I need to have, I have hi hats in the ceiling, but I 3d printed, um, basically like covers, light covers that keep the light from bleeding into the screen because you know how light is with projectors. So, um, I, I don't have a lot of like light, like bouncing off the walls and I have darker colored, um, paint on the walls to kind of help with that, but it does not help with making videos. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to let light come in from the door here and hopefully that helps you guys see this a little bit better. And I, I got to find and like an led light bar or something like a light ring so I can make it go this way. So I'll help you guys see this a little bit better. Okay. I've been blabbering so much. Uh, let's see. The next part of the wing. Okay. So this is the next part of the wing. This was a little bit of a screw up on the print, but I don't care. Um, this is literally, I had to print another one of these for a build video. So um, it is what it is. And it, this is actually going to be a real test because I don't have a flat surface right here. Actually, you know what? Let me go grab, I'm gonna go grab myself a piece of sandpaper real quick. I'll be right back.
Okay, I am back. <laughs> Cause I just tried to, I just tried to mate those two services up, and I'm like, oh god, this is gonna, this is gonna be dangerous here. So I'm just trying to get a little bit more of a flat mating surface here. I can already feel that it's starting to flatten out a little bit. I just need a little more because it's so stringy in here. I don't actually even know what happened. I have so few issues and failures. Uh, not even failures, just like user, so few even user error type issues with the, uh, with the bamboo printer. Um, I'm sure everybody's sick of me being such a, a, a fanboy. But I almost gave up on 3D printing a few times uh, when the uh, the, cre the Creality, um, the Ender, the Ender 3 and my CR10, uh, they just were so unreliable. It's like every other print, like it would print good for a while and then it just stopped. So, um, okay, that's good enough. All right, good. So let me get this out of here. Um, so yeah, I almost gave up on it and the bamboo is what I would not be here today. I would not be here making all this stuff, making planes. Um, the, pl the, the, the 3d printing has become so good with the bamboo that, um, I've literally just, I don't have to focus on trying to make it print. It just, it, the, the auto bed leveling is perfect. I've, I, this is actually probably the first uh, bed leveling related issue I have had. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. So when you do this part of the wing, the back, uh, Elevon control surface edge is what you need to line up. And what you do is you line up the back corner and then you flush this and then you hold it, uh, where it's kind of in between. It's so, I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to scale the wing down anymore because you want to have it, you, you need, you need some thickness in this wing, uh, to work without a spar. So I was forced, I was forced with a decision, um, to either, oops, I just sprayed my fingers. Oh, my fingers are gonna, are gonna melt. Um, so I was forced with either scale down the thickness of this to to match this and then this got so thin out here i was really concerned about strength issues um so i just left it and you know what it's really not it's pretty intuitive so it's it there's going to be a slight little bit of overhang right here and a slight little bit of overhang on the bottom just make it equal if you if you if you want to make the top flush you can do that and let the bottom hang over a little bit um the actual plane is not it's it's pretty similar to this um it's not exact but um let me see if i can just get this because all right there we go i just want to really kick this because i don't want a wing failure especially flying this thing um without a spar okay i'm not going to go into the whole theory of the wing spar thing. I have not ripped a wing off yet. I have not broken a wing. Uh, knock on wood. Okay, so now I put the uh, I put the plane on my in between my legs uh, when I'm doing this. <coughs> when I do the other side. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I am going to I'm going to glue on the other. The, uh, the horizontal tail. So let's do that now. Glue it up. Okay. Get that going. All right. The biggest thing is the back surface for the elevators. I'm just going to spray everything to speed these videos up. I'm sacrificing my health for you guys. <laughs> 
what I really need is like a window over there and then a fan behind me just blowing the air this way. That's what I need. Okay, that's good. All right, so flip, the, flip this thing over, balance it on my legs. And let's find the wing base. Here it is. You can't mess this up because it just, it matches. So there's no left and right on here. Oop, hold on. Stringing. Flat surfaces, just remember that. Always go for the flat surfaces. All right, across the top. Lots of glue. As much as you can do without it squirting all over the place. Alrighty. There we go. Push from the top. Keep it lined up. Keep it flush. <laughs> God, this stuff is so strong. Ugh. If I end up with like lung cancer or COPD or one of these weird emphysema or I've never smoked, ever. Uh, I've, I do have a carpet cleaning business, tile and grout. So I do clean. I do. I, I'm around a lot of uh, cleaning chemicals and stuff like that. But um, I just feel like the kicker is the one, and and all the fiberglass and carbon fiber work that I've done in the past. That'll be the ones that get me. I think. So later on, if if I'm having an issue, you've been part of it. <laughs> It's not something to joke about, but all right, let's, this is probably good. Let's do the next one. I haven't even grabbed the part yet. I'm already applying glue. When you do this enough, this is how it rolls. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Did I print two of the wrong? Oh no, this is good. All right. Let's get this up here. I am going to definitely come back and I'm going to add and re-glue. Do this here. I'm gonna add and re-glue another bead. Oh, sorry. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna add more glue once this is kicked and, and cured. Uh, I'm going to go and add another bead because this is a critical right here. This joint is the one that will break because there's still a lot of lifting surface uh, past this joint. So, um, but I was pulling on this thing pretty, pretty darn hard during the maiden. So uh, it should be, it should be good to go. Um, I highly recommend 3S. This little, this little guy here while I'm holding the fan, I mean the, um, I'm holding the glue joint. This little fan, this, uh, what is it? it? This is the 4900 KV 3S Power Fun. It is, it's, it's like the little, it's like the little beast fan. It, it's unbelievable how much power. It's like 770 grams and the 4S version of that makes 900 on a good day. So let's just say this gives you like 750, 770, what it claims, because I really do think that it is pretty close to that. Um, the 4S version, for some reason, you get shorter flight times and you have heavier, heavier batteries. I don't see a lot of benefit. Um, and it just, it feels, it just feels like better hand launch uh, power. People are sleeping on it because they want to go for the 4S, but you you have to carry a heavier battery and you're going to get shorter flight times because you're probably going to have to like a, a 13 to 1500 milliamp uh, 4S with these lighter, smaller planes. The 2200s get pretty heavy. So a 2200 3S, I don't know. It's just It just feels like that's the way to go. You get like a solid three and a half minute flight, like... Oh, can you even see this? Oh, my finger stuck to the to the to the tripod. 
<laughs> Freaking CA glue. I hate CA glue so much. Well, I don't. I don't like breathing it in. It's terrible. On, look, at, look at my fingers. It's all over. I'm like coated. Okay. I was told by my buddy Chris uh, from the Facebook group that um, nail polish remover or acetone. So I have to do that. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ask the wifey if she's got some uh, some nail polish remover. I'll try alcohol wipes too and see if that works. <coughs> Sorry, I'm, my son got me sick, so I'm kind of dealing with a cold. A full-on Neanderthal mouth breather for the next... It's been about a week and a half. It just won't go away. All right. Good. So we are uh, we are winged up here. So we have wings and we have uh, horizontal bases. All right. So let's see. Um, I don't think there's much more I can do now. Maybe what I'll do. Uh, what I'll do now is is feed the, the motor wires. Okay, so you guys are gonna have, now this is, I'm not gonna say this is this is hard. Um, it is, it's not easy, but, it, and it's kind of a little bit of a pain, but, uh, but it is what it is. So let me, let me see. I have, I have modified this a little, a, a tiny little bit since, um, since the first one so let's see if I can if there's any chance I can just do this okay so <laughs> let me show you what I'm doing first so I have uh, I always use electrical tape on my on my fan wires the the let me see the Xfly uh, 50 millimeter has longer wires which is a huge help i wish power fun had the extra inch and a half on their wires but they don't but it is what it is so what i'm doing here i'm staggering the uh the wires let me see if i can get my 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 camera to to show you in here a little bit better so i'm staggering them like the yellow one is in front and then the red one's behind it it's kind of like the thunderbirds when they fly uh, missing man formation, like, like you, you, you stagger them in there and then once you wiggle. Now, the first time I did this, I had to use a uh, coat hanger and, uh, and push the coat hanger back to the EDF compartment and then, uh, electrical tape it around and pull each one individually through. It was super tight. Now this thing, when when you realize, when, when you guys print this and you see how small this plane is, you're gonna understand how little room I had to work with and uh, you'll appreciate, you know, the struggle of, of this before, uh, or once it's all done. I'm sorry, I have trouble thinking, thinking and doing and, and speaking into the camera at the same time. All right, let's see. It feels like we're we're like six inches through here. So let me see if we're getting uh, we're getting through here. Uh, get this camera back a little bit. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got it through. I have no light to see anything. Oh, they are through. Cool. All right. So what I have done is I have made it so you don't need. Well, I'm not going to speak too soon because I can see them in the cockpit area, but uh, but uh, they're not completely, completely through. So I'm going to hang this upside down here. And what I do, maybe, let me just get this nose down here and I'm going to zoom out so you guys aren't just bored looking at nothing. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So what I do is I, I let the EDF hang and I, and I pull it back and forth so that it wants to just drop down with gravity. So all of them seem to be going. 
You give it a little shake. It'll go. Oh, I think we're good. I think we are good. I think it's through. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay. So we have wires. Look at that. You see them in there? Can you see those? All right. So this is not as difficult as it was. The first shot was cursing. <laughs> That's why I don't do build alongs on the first time because this, this channel here. Okay. That, that's another thing. So in here, oh, I can't see it. Can you see that? Okay. You just take a knife. So there, there's an opening here for the wires for when the fans flush or sitting in the, in the, in the compartment. And then there's a, there's a secondary hole of like a cheater feeder hole for the, for the, for the ESC wires. So what I did was, okay. I have so many thoughts in my head. I just can't keep them all straight. You're going to have a little bit of material here uh, that you can just take an X-Acto and just cut that open. Um, I didn't want to remove too much material because I don't want to disturb too much of the structure. So, um, oh, and you're also going to have a little happy accident hole right here there's just a little tiny slit it's like a it's like a war wound don't worry about it <laughs> i'm not eclipsing i never claimed to be eclipsing i'm not one of these perfectionist builders my stuff flies though so and it doesn't take a year to put stuff together and print all the a gazillion pieces um so uh you take what you can get um so okay so what i'm doing here is I am gonna pull one wire through at a time. So I'm pulling on one and it feels like it is the black wire. So I'm gonna pull the other two out of the way and I'm going to allow the black one to feed through with the connector. So basically you wanna you wanna just you wanna push this is why it's so important to tape these wires uh, because you are gonna have an issue getting them to go through without pulling out and and getting caught and then when the when the wire disconnects you you really you're kind of screwed you have to you have to go and, and do the whole thing over again so okay or you could just pull on them hard and hope that they don't disconnect which you you I, I would try it I would I would duct or uh, electrical tape some of these wires together and then see how hard you have to pull before they unplug. And you'll be pretty surprised. Um, I am actually struggling right now because I'm trying to... Okay, I got the red one. Okay, the red one is through. Now I'm going to go black. You have to do one at a time. That's right, I remember now. Um, and then where is the blue? Let's see, the blue one's the last one. So I'm going to flip this over and find out where it is. It's this, it's this one here. All right. Uh, sometimes you need to keep pulling, keep pulling. And then this is hung up on something. Oh, sorry about that. So there's this last one is just hung up a little. There we go. Got it. Okay, cool. So I got them all through. And look at that. Look at the fitment. Beautiful thing. Okay. So... With standard uh, extension wires from the Amazon. Uh, let me see with the light, if everything is flush in here. And it is, okay. So with the standard extension wires and power fun, you got this. So plenty of length. It's actually, if I had to choose a length, it would be perfectly this because now you can swap wires onto the ESC to get whatever combination of wires to make the fan go forward. Um, I already have my handy dandy. Oh God, I almost broke the wing. Don't move fast around 3D printed parts. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to give you the dentist view here of, uh, I'm gonna tighten this clamp up. So that, all right, I'm gonna get right over the top of this. 
All right, and I'm gonna go grab my glue gun. Here, here's your ball, Maverick. So the glue gun is hot, it's ready to rock. And I make sure that the wires are all through. <coughs> now I've said this, <coughs> excuse me. I've said this a million times. Um, God, I'm so congested. I've said this uh, a million times. Um, you find the happy place where it's sitting nice and flush you don't need glue on the bottom. You just don't. You can drop it in. This is, I literally drip it. I drip it from the, I drip it from the, uh, from the fan lip, down the fan, and you let it, you just let it drip into the side. That is more glue than you need. These things are not, I mean, my 90 millimeter, I did it the same way. Sides of the fan, hot glue is unbelievably strong. Um, I mean, it can't hurt to take, I mean, these are useless. So I use it as a hot glue spreader. Um, I just kind of dab it into the, into the sides just to uh, get it in there perfect. Because I've actually, I've actually crashed planes, and uh, and the, and the you know sixty four millimeter, seventy millimeter fans are still so locked in there. Even full on crashes like 40, 50 mile an hour, sixty mile an hour into the ground. Um, crashed a lot, a lot of planes. <clears throat> That's how you learn. That's how you learn. You actually learn more from mistakes than uh, than anything else. That's how life is. Okay. So that is good. Uh, there is no reason to not get this thing totally sealed up. So where is my other? Oh, there we go. This is for this. Okay. <clears throat> So this is going to be super fugly. Uh, you guys will not have this issue. Uh, okay, I'm just going to squish this down. Okay. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. Zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. This may perf uh, affect performance slightly because this is so mangled. This is just, I already told you, this is uh, basically just stringing because I, I bridged this gap. The, the printer br had to bridge that gap. Um, basically, there was no support and it was just an overhang. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. It depends if like if the corner of it is, uh, is rounded or not. Um, so I'm just going to, oh, I shouldn't have dropped any glue in there. Don't try and fill that with glue because that's just going to create even more turbulence. Uh, I'm going to just smear that. I like to, uh, to smear the glue. Um, cause it's just taking weight off and it's filling in all the air holes. <clears throat> fans work better when there are less air holes. That's what I'm saying here. This is going to create a lot of turbulence uh, when the air is getting pushed right out of the fan. It wants smooth, and it's not getting smooth here. But it is what it is. This is just a build video. Like I said, this is going to be sliced uh, for you guys, so um, you're not going to have that issue. All right, that is plenty dry. So the fan is secured. The fan's ready to go. I got motor wires ready to go. Um, I am still waiting for my TPU hinges to finish printing. So I am going to come back to this when I have... Oh, wait, no. Maybe... You know what? Maybe I have enough. 
Aha, I do. So I have, this is lightweight PLA. I love this stuff. This is 0.6 millimeter lightweight PLA hinge material. It's just so good to work with because when you it cuts easy, it sticks into the slot easy. This stuff is a little bit more flexy. This is a 95A uh, TPU. I actually should look to see if they have if they have heavier heavier than 95A. Um, oh, before I do this, I am going to lay down another bead. Uh, a nice thick blob of glue there. I'm gonna put another one here. Like thick, I'm talking like, like thick, thick. Like thick, thick, thick. Oops, it is dripping all over the place. My wife is gonna kill me. Maverick, go away. I don't want you breathing this somebody. Go, go away Maverick, go, go. Go, go get your ball. Here. All right. Uh, same thing here. Okay. You see what I do for you guys? I printed a whole plane just for a build video. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Ooh, I gotta get that off. Oh, that was so stupid. Okay, so this is what you don't want to do. The last thing you want to do is is uh, accelerate a glue blob right where the elevon has to go. So now I have to sand that down, but that's part of my life. Okay, let's do this. Let's go back to one. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, the ailerons as well because it's the same. It's the same process. Let me go grab my scissors real quick. Okay, I am back. I'm back. All right. So the T7 is, you're going to notice it's got some tiny little, uh, tiny little slots. So you need scissors and you need razor knife. Uh, just take a look at the slot and realize that it is, this is the slot, the size right here. So we're talking like, like one and a half razor blade width. Uh, so you're gonna wanna clear any debris from inside. It's always good to do that. Uh, every once in a while, I believe on this one, I had to go in twice maybe three times. I even had to, what I do is I do the twisty twist. I twist it like this and I dig it out, twist it. It's a, it's a good slot. They usually print great with, even without support, but um, sometimes the TPU is hard to, it kind of squishes all over the place and it won't, and it won't go in, especially when you really need it to go in. Uh, did I label? I did. I have a labeled L here. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice touch? So you got an L there. And do your dry fit. Do your dry fit. All right. We're good there. Oh, you see, I did my dry fit and I realized that there's some stringing hair. And there's also a little bit of a weird, like, a little bit of a weird uh, thing going on there. Uh, like a little br brim lip, uh, something went, went happened there. Okay, so like I'm gonna go a razor blade width and no bigger. And seriously guys, these do not need to be big. Uh, like three quarters of an inch. 
maybe. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna make two out of that piece. Uh, do your, oh, here. You gotta take your razor and you gotta go into this side too, all right? So, do the wiggle, do the wiggle. All right, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. Okay. Do your test fit. We're good. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Okay. I'm going to grab my star bond. So if you can see that, I don't go crazy. Ooh, I almost went crazy. <laughs> um, let it let it go downhill and let it drip into the oops, let it drip into the center of the hole and then push it in okay all the way down that is plenty you don't need any more than that uh let me get this over here a little bit okay so everybody can see what i'm doing here so i'm doing the same thing here a bead a bead you want it on both sides because you never know what's going on inside these pockets there could be the printers are funny you don't know what's going on so now we have our two tabs i hold here <laughs> i'm stuck i'm stuck ah okay <laughs> oh god i'm so stuffed probably sounds ridiculous uh I have to blow my nose, but I can't stop doing this right now because I have to finish. Okay, so I'm holding that. That's plenty of time to hold it. I actually have enough material to do the whole thing. Uh, let's see, I need two lengths. So one blades width here. I'm gonna cut this right here, three quarters of an inch. This one's a little long. So what I'm thinking, like you can see that, this side's better than this side. This side's a little too wide. So I'm going to trim that so that I have these two pieces right here. And, oh yeah, I forgot to do the clean these pockets out. Get the, do the wiggle, sorry. the wiggle uh what am i doing glue glue that let it drip into the center of the hole and then uh oh see i'm having a problem it's not going in all right i'm skipping that hole all right neither of these are oh here we go okay Wow, that was close. Close call. Okay. So it, it didn't it didn't want to go into this one for some reason. It's this probably this piece of PLA. Lightweight PLA. Yeah, it's it's got something going on in this side of it. So now I'm gonna re-wiggle it. Wiggle wiggle. Wiggle wiggle. Okay. It could have been that the that the a corner was was lifted up on there or something. Uh, I'm not sure, but this is a little bit of a smaller one, so it doesn't really matter how big these things are. This is such a lightweight plane, has four control surfaces, it's evenly distributed, you're, you're fine. Yeah, it's, something's really not letting this go in all the way. Okay, regardless, it worked. So just squeeze, squeeze, set that off to the side. <coughs> oh. God, I feel like crap. Okay, dry fit. Let's see. What do we have? Is it gonna work? First shot. It's a little tight on this one. This side wants to go in, this side doesn't. So what I found, and th this could be totally in my brain. What I found is right after I put the knife in here and wiggle, it almost has like a memory where it's like memory foam when you push it and it slowly starts coming back. I feel like the pocket closes a little bit. 
I built, I listen, I built so many of these planes. I could be just a crazy person or there could be some method to my thinking. Um, Cause watch, it'll slide in perfect. The second time that I do this, it like slips in like it's, <laughs> like it's got more room than it needs, let's say. Uh, so, all right, let's do it and check. L is always on the bottom. I would never print an L on the top of the Elevon. Okay, cool. So yeah, that, it's definitely slipping in better. Uh, this is, there is some obstruction inside there. So I'm going to shorten this guy down. You, you wouldn't believe how little material you need to make this work. It literally just needs to go in like two millimeters and have a glue joint or have it glue, glue together. So that is actually, that's where you want it to be for full throw. So, okay. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go easy on the tip, on the tipping of the, uh, of the bottle because you don't wanna put an ungodly amount of glue on this because this is where you don't want to have uh, an issue. All right, and you don't want to go too close here either because you want to be able to, you want to get full elevator travel. So that is good. All right. You guys can close these, these joints up or these, these gaps up if you want. Uh, but you really want to have enough elevator travel. <clears throat> okay. This should be kicking pretty soon. That is a lot more travel than I had on, uh, on my other. And I'm curious if that is going to help me get a little bit more elevator authority. Well, I mean, it has to, so. All right, cool. That feels, feels solid. Okay, let's do the other side real quick. <coughs> oh, I already did it. I already did it. All right, let's just do our test fit and see, maybe we'll get lucky and there's no obstruction in there. Let's see. Is there an obstruction? Yeah, it's shallow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to trim a little bit off of each. Trim, trim. That's all you need, guys. I'm telling you. I've already flown this thing. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to clear the pockets again. A little bit. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Doesn't, the, the blade side doesn't matter as much. I just, out of, out of a habit, I flip the blade around. Yeah, I can feel this one is shallow. Yeah, this had to be shallow because of the height of the pocket. Uh, I'm probably boring you right now with uh, all the stuff you don't need to know, but pocket had to be shallow because it was cutting through the, the surface here. So, okay, let's do our test fit. Oops, that would have been silly. Test fit it. Uh, glue it in upside down. I have actually done that. I have glued in a an elevator upside down. It was very embarrassing. Good thing I wasn't making a build video. What I did was I cut what you do is you just slice the uh, the hinge off, and um, and you basically just you're gonna have to just find a way to just make space and cut out the old hinge, and uh, and you could still salvage the whole thing. All right, there we go. There we go. That's the travel I want. It's good. This is kind of floating in here. 
I'm going to hold this in its full elevator because uh, it doesn't want to bite. Like I can't, when I squeeze this, I can't squeeze it onto the hinge for some reason. Something happened in the print. It's like a lot of material for some reason. I don't know. Okay, it's actually, it's biting. Okay, cool. All right, I think that's good. I think we're good here. That looks good. It's, it's, it's even on both sides. Uh, okay, cool. So the same thing. I mean, maybe I'll just, I want to try and keep the video short for you guys, but maybe I'll, oh no. I got glue on this and then it, it stuck to the, Oh, it's stuck to the aileron. I have a hole in it. All right, whatever. Put a little glue. If, there, if you got a hole, you could put some stringing in there and put a little a little glue. Or that actually should should hold it. It's actually it's actually holding it. Okay. This is the left side. Oh, of course, the holes on the top. All right. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can real quick do the ailerons or just do one of them. I'll just do one of them for you. There's really not much else to show you guys. I don't think I, I don't think I really need to, to go over any more with this build. The, the servos are pretty straightforward. Uh, let me just move this back. Servos are pretty straightforward. They just go, there's a hole, a pretty big size hole for the elevator servos. Servo wires, you do need to have, uh, where am I? I put them uh, on my desk, but they're like, you need extensions that are like that long for the elevators, but for the ailerons, you actually don't need anything. Um, you don't need any extension they will they will fit uh with just the the supplied amazon servo um so that is always a plus oh here's my hinge material i was looking for my hinge material now the aileron hinges are even smaller like tiny so uh you really don't need a lot we're going to go with like that and we'll just go with that. I can trim it back. Uh, what did I do with the left one? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So test fit real quick. Good. Test fit. Good. Okay. So let's put this in here. A bead and a bead. Bead of glue. Okay, that's good. Ow. Just stabbed me under the finger now. On here. Okay. Okay. I mean, the amount of glue that you need is so little, but you don't know if it's if it's biting so it has to bite something uh all right it's got a bite that looks pretty solid okay so the left one i mean it, it says l so it's the left one uh i'm gonna dry fit this even though i have not cleared the pockets yet Cause you never know. Sometimes they just go right in. They're too long anyway. I can tell. Okay. Yep. They're not going. All right. So take your your knife. Oh yeah. Those are tight. Very tight. Okay. We're gonna need a wiggle, 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 wiggle. Flip the blade, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. Wiggle, wiggle. 
Okay. L on the bottom. That is going in. All right, that did go in. Okay, this these are gonna have to be trimmed back big time. So I'm gonna take like, I don't know, that much. I'm gonna take that much. I mean, there's like not a lot there. Always do your dry fit. If, you, if you're confident, you, that it's gonna go oh okay so this you can see that right there that is not supposed to it it's just too much material sometimes gets printed um onto the corners for some reason i'm not sure why so i just take a knife and i just shave it shave it down a little bit because uh, for some reason just gives you a little bit too much material. It's not a top or a bottom. I do have two top, two bottom. Uh, so I don't have any bed adhesion issues. But okay, so now that's smooth. Come out to the corner, shave it, shave it. Make sure there's no extra material because this is a super tight fit here. You guys want tight fit? You want more complica complicated builds? That's fine. I, I, I mean, whatever, however you want to do it. Um, okay, there you go. So that went in perfect. I mean, I don't know how you can complain with that hinge gap. But somebody will, I'm sure. Which is fine. I can take constructive criticism. But uh, now you got to do this quick. Quick. Very quick. You don't want it to set up. So get it in, wiggle it, wiggle it left, wiggle it right, wiggle it left, wiggle it right, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Why is it kicking? Why is it kicking? It's starting to kick, and I don't understand why it's doing this. Uh, you got to make a decision. Do you pull it out or do you keep it? And I think I've waited too long. So now I have to live with this situation. Okay, so this is, you know what, um, this did screw up. You saw this went in perfect and it slid in and there was no issue whatsoever. Um, and now I have a hinge gap, which is a screwed up situation. Um, but, so it's not the end of the world though. You can always take material off of your, off of your control surface. So... It's totally fine. Nothing's nothing's gonna happen. Just don't cut your fingers when you're doing this. So I actually need to find a newer blade. This is an old blade. Um, so you're gonna need to just take like a, a millimeter or so off of whatever whatever side is is uh, is contacting. Um, there we go. That's good. Just keep cutting back a little bit at a time, slice it, and then you'll be fine. There we go. Now I'm good. So now you just need to just trim it and so that it's totally, totally free. I totally screwed this up. These things fit so perfect. They're so tight. Like th this is, this is what you're going to run into. Um, if I wasn't rushing, I would have you know, did a little more wiggling to open up the pocket. Usually when I'm doing this, not on camera, I'll do it three or four times. I'll, I'll get the, the pocket cleared and, um, it, it fits, it fits perfect. So, um, yep. It's just me being stupid rushing for the video, obviously. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. So now we're, we're totally good. We just have a gap. Um, this should have been up about, uh, about three quarters of a millimeter and this would have been totally flush this would have been flush um, because you don't really need that much throw on aileron you need like very little so okay so anyway um that is the t7 um we have 
We have almost all the control surfaces in. We have one left. Uh, I don't need to. I don't need to go over that with you guys right now because it's just it's pointless. It's the same thing that I just did, just the other side. And um, yeah, I hope this was uh, helpful, and you learned some some tips and tricks. And uh, I will see you on the next build.